not only making the clay conform to the uh, will of your hands and the, uh, and the center of the wheel, but you take some concentration so it's like a, a mental centering as well as a physical centering of the clay. A lot of times it's plain in the mud. Start out with a lump of clay and you end up with something. Often I'll start with the light and the dark and then work the in-between colors. It's a meditation. I love the glazing. I just, I hate getting my hands mucky with clay. A day at the office with Karen Rossetti and Richard Groshala flows easily from one artistic endeavor to another. The studio hums with a creative confidence and a gentle give and take. Could you add one more line to that? Sure. The two artists create fine ceramic artwork together. Each piece is shaped by a shared vision enhanced by their individual talents. This piece is beautiful the way it is, but I prefer when he adds one more line. So there would be two lines of copper wire and then this line I can glaze with a solid color. It just sort of sets the, gives the piece a bottom. I don't know. Sure, hon, I can do that for you. <laughs> he really is really precise in pretty much all of his, uh, I think his throwing and creating. It's one of his trademarks. We don't aim per for perfection, just the appearance of it. Richard works with casual ease. 40 years of experience as a potter guides his eye and his hands. This time he's carving a landscape on a pot, freehand, based on the picture in his head. So I've come up with a couple of uh, designs for the trees that seem to fit the space little pretty well. <laughs> little bushes. Yeah, those are little bushes I just put in there. <laughs> After Richard put the first trees on, and then we just started to figure out our palette, from there I think we've blossomed into our own style. Richard and Karen's recent work is a contemporary interpretation of traditional pottery. The landscape series draws from the arts and crafts movement of the early 20th century with carefully carved surfaces and a colorful palette. Well, it's, it's like everything in nature. Like, it's like our own bodies. Everything is connected. So it just evolved. It, it just began at that time to go from just grasses to the trees to the landscapes. And it's, it's, to me, it's been some of our funnest work. Voila. I personally like when there's four or five layers to the landscape besides the trees and the bushes so I can make more depth with my color and glaze application. Karen's experience as a fiber artist and her dramatic sense of color play an important role in their work. Karen's favorite glazes fill an array of squeeze bottles designed for pinpoint accuracy. I'm real precise in my glazing just as Richard is real precise in his creating. She's greatly exceeded my expectations. <laughs> and luckily, Richard makes beautiful carved lines. And now I have to decide, is this part of the tree or is this part of the landscape? <laughs> oh, that's, that's tree. That's tree. That's tree. Yeah, they, see, it's going behind that hillside. Her sense of color is, of course, you know, coming out in the work, which is the point where I, I never would have gotten to on my own. My vision of the surface is also in his head, and his vision of the surface is also in my head. And I think we, we share that. Their collective body of work holds several shapes and styles. There's flowing lines and smooth curves, textured surfaces, an Asian influence, and always the force of nature. We have ignition. The wild card in the process is the raku firing. It's where the chemistry of clay and glaze combine with extreme heat and flames to produce beautiful and sometimes unpredictable results. 
And those pieces I took directly out of the kill and put them into the uh, wood shavings because I want a heavy reduction on these pieces. And what a reduction will do is it will draw oxygen from the materials that make up the glaze so it will change their composition slightly. Now this shot of uh, compressed air just forces that uh, contraction of the, uh, the surface skin on the pieces. And what I'm after here is a good uh, crackle effect along with the, uh, the color of the glazes. Each batch is cautiously placed in the kiln, brought up to temperature, and carefully finished with fire. There's intuition, there's, there's a, a pre-knowledge or, or a, a experience, I guess, that, that lets you know what's going on or, or, or helps you to understand what's going on. It's always winging it. Now let's see how these bigger pieces turned out. See if they got glitzified. We'll have to take this inside and scrub it and finally reveal what the actual colors are underneath here. They're all <laughs> our children. They're all our children. <laughs> they all stand up straight. You know. yeah. Yeah. I think this is a gorgeous piece here. I love the way they come out when they're, when they're cleaned That's up. That's my and favorite just, out of this firing. They're just so lively. It's a we. You know, it's, it's, it, it really is a collaboration. It's us that are doing it. And, and um, that melding of the, the, the separate people, that's, that's a great thing to have learned.